So, boys and girls, that's me again, Trusty Panda, and today, as you can see, I'm on F1 Manager 2024. I want to introduce you to Level Up Racing. Uh, we are a brand new team coming in F1 this season with uh, Robert uh, Schwarzman and Felipe Drogovic. Uh, so, yeah, we will be a challenging uh, team this season. Uh, we will be having the uh, worst car of the grid and uh, yeah we hope to uh, get some improvements in that car at the end of the season so yeah with that said let's get into the gameplay so of course we need to start the season by picking a sponsor and from this you can see which one is giving the most money and I see this uh, one is our core if I say it correctly they give me the most money up front as you can see they give me 19 million up front we also gonna take some additional bonuses sponsors to get that money a little bit up so as you now see we are getting 28 million up front so let's confirm our talk we have moderated uh, for racing uh, lines VIP activities are uh, preferenced uh, race day 21 million, engagements 29 million, upfront 28 million. So, yep, yeah, let's confirm our sponsors for the season. This will be the card that I will be using. It's like a black, yellow, red. It's kind of Belgium, but in this way of lines, it's more like a, a German flag. But yeah, I like uh, this car uh, color I designed it, so that's the one that we will be using. So, there we got. It now we now got our sponsors as you can see we now got 30 million you see it here in the corner so yep yeah, now we can start working on our car and uh, see if we can uh, get higher up the grid so the first thing that I want to be doing right now in the before we start the season is building that race simulator it gives me that 10% weekly development boost and that's something that we will need uh, for the season so we're gonna construct that one it will take nine days so yep uh, we already spent 1 million of our uh, 30 million budget so, so how am i gonna develop my car through the season well i'm actually gonna look which part is the best for the things that we want to upgrade if i look over here at top speed i see the best way to increase top speed is the chassis DRS effectiveness is the rear wing low speed front wing medium speed front wing high speed un high speed underfloor dirty air front wing tires the suspension and engine cooling side pods so top speed is a chassis one which means that for me when I'm now gonna develop a new chassis we have a reset in nine days so we're gonna take everything that we have into the chassis I will be building my chassis on race performance so we get that 0 0.89 speed boost we're gonna get that 0 0.02 acceleration that 3.28 DRS effectiveness so everything's go up, but we're losing 4% on the engine cooling, which we later will get back with the side pods. So for now, I'm gonna put this one on race performance. I'm gonna put five, six engineers on it. We're gonna let it stay on normal. It will take 22 days, so confirm it. And there we have it. Our first upgrade for the car is uh, in development. I'm also thinking about building the team hub straight away because that gives me that 20% weekly development bonus so my staff will uh, get a little bit higher so let's upgrade that one as well. So yeah with that said let's head over to our first round of the season. So of course the first round of the season our race targets will be that P21 and P21 because we have the worst cars on the grid. 
So now we can head over to Bahrain for round number one. F1 is back, ladies and gentlemen. So I will not show you the practice sessions. I will not show you the qualification. I will show you our qualification results. I will show you everything that's happening in the race, but not the race itself because it will make a long, long video. And of course the race results. So yeah, uh, once we get that, I'm coming back to you. So, boys and girls, here we got our results of our first qualification uh, at round 1. Uh, Felipe Drogovic starting P18, Robert Schwarzman starting P22. So, the first Grand Prix is over, the Bahrain Grand Prix. And as you can see, Max Verstappen, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc are the ones that are on the podium. We are at P21 and P22. So, boys and girls, in the meantime, we already have four developments running for the car upgrades. So, let me walk you through them. With the chassis, I have based everything on the top speed. Which increases a lot, but we are losing a lot of engine cooling. But the engine cooling is not really a problem, because on the side pots we set everything on engine cooling. So we lose 4% with the chassis, but then we still have 6% uh, with the uh, side pots of the engine cooling. For the front wing we have based on the low speed imp uh, improvement and the dirty air tolerance that you can see that 3% and that 0.024 g's of low speed and for the rear wing the most important things that we are based on is the medium speed with that 0.018 g's improvement and that DRS effectness, uh, effectness of how do I say it, with that 5.27% uh, improvement. So yeah, that are the upgrades that we are doing or that we are developing. I put three engineers on each project except the front wing because I only had one left. So as you can see it will take 17 days for the chassis, 28 days for the side pods. Uh, 37 for the rear wing and 44 for the front wing so when all these projects are done the new ETR uh, will start and we can develop uh, the last two parts of the car so now it is time boys and girls for round number two so we are still putting the same race targets that P21 and P21 for both drivers. We're here in Jeddah where the tension is boiling. And so now here we are at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. We only have a practice session, qualification and race. So again, once we have the qualification results and race results, I will come back to you. So, boys and girls, as you can see, we get our results from our second Grand Prix qualification. We are in P22 with Robrecht Schwarzman and P21 with Felipe Drogovic. So, let's see which result we can book uh, after the race. So, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix is after... Uh, or is finished and it was not a very good Grand Prix for the team uh, we lost Robrecht uh, Schwarzman he crashed in the wall net uh, yeah also like Perez and Hulkenberg they also crashed into the wall Drogovic therefore moved two places up but the main problem is Robrecht Schwarzman's gearbox is completely gone it's only the race number two, uh, so we already need to swap in a new gearbox. So here we now got the confirmation that we are missing car parts. And as you can see, he has a lot of damage with that crash. We need to put in a new chassis. 
which I even don't know if we have it, so let me check. Yep, we still have one chassis, uh, so we may be gonna need uh, one chassis uh, as a reserve, so we're gonna build that chassis. He needs a new front wing, we still have two there as reserve. The rear wing is okay, side pods are okay, underfloor is okay, but the suspension is also damaged. So I see we only have one, so let's also make one suspension to be safe for next race. But then the main problem, as you can see, the engine is at 50, which is still okay. ERS... You can see that the ERS has taken a lot of impact, as you see it dropped 40% in, in wear of our second car. But the main problem is this, that you can see the gearbox is completely destroyed. So we need to put in a new gearbox already after two races, we'll, while meantime the other gearbox from the car 2 is still at 77%. Uh, as you see, a new gearbox is costing a million, so I think that we will definitely need to be using that this uh, season, because we only have two left now, with this one in using. So, yep, uh, a very painful race. With the car developments, we are still uh, looking. I see that the chassis will be completed in 11 days, so that will be before Melbourne. Then I can take those three guys and place uh, them on these projects. I think two guys on the front wing. And then maybe one guy on the rear wing or something. We will see. So yeah, let's head on to uh, Melbourne. So we now have the confirmation that uh, the chassis has been designed. So we now will start making two of them. Uh, I may be looking like... Rushed is this 1.6 million and normally I do this like four on normal but then uh, Yeah, it's we will make two chassis on normal it will take 10 days so that means uh, We have one chassis for Suzuka and the other chassis we will have for uh, China So if we rush them it will take 14 days then it will cost me $500,000 extra, but then I see that we have them in 14 days, which means that we will have them both uh, for uh, Suzuka. So that's maybe the better option because I need to improve the car. So let's try that one. So we will try and put those chassis uh, before the race in uh, Japan. So, boys and girls, before we go to Australia, let me first head over to our car development and put the front wing with some more engineers that we have available from the engineers that we had working on the chassis. So now, we put four engineers on it and it will take 21 days, which means that we now will have the rear wing and the front wing at the same time. In the meantime, we have 14 days until the chassis is completed, which uh, gives us that uh, position that we will have it, uh, as you can see, uh, let me check. Here you can see the chassis one and here chassis two, so we will have the chassis before the Japanese Grand Prix. So yeah, let's uh, get going and uh, let's get ready for Australia. So racing targets in Australia will still be that P21 and uh, P21 for both drivers because we still have the worst car on the grid. So now it is time for Australia, as you can see, we it's are now wonderful loading to be in back there. Down under. For the and here we ha will have practice, qualification and the race. The race will be in rain, I see. So, yep, uh, again, I will show you when our qualification results and the race results. So, I will see you when they are ready. So, boys and girls, qualification here in Melbourne, Australia will be P20 for Robert Schwarzman. 
and P22 for Felipe Drogovic. So now it is time for the race. And so here we have the race results of the Australian Grand Prix. As you can see, Max Norris and Leclerc are on the podium. We are P19 and P20. So Drogovic, the big winner for the team with three places up. Sonoda and Bottas, they got DNF. So, yep, not a good result again here in Australia. But uh, normally, next race, we will have that new chassis with that speed boost. So maybe that can help us a little bit on the grid. So I just got the update that our side pod has been completed. So the new side pods are completed. Which means that I put the engineers from the side pods on the rear and front wing. As you see now 5 engineers on each. 9 and 8 days. Uh, which will uh, be that we will have uh, those things already up as you can see uh, over here so maybe with some luck we will have those upgrades ready for the Chinese Grand Prix uh, but yeah we will see how it goes so yeah uh, at the moment we are still developing uh, the new uh, chassis uh, it will take three more days until the f chassis is done and we are making also an underfloor because we had to repair that on one of our driver's cars. So yep, um, Japan will be your first test with the new uh, chassis. So, boys and girls, our new parts just came in. So let's check the car out. As you can see, top speed 21 and 22. And when we are putting the new chassis in the car, on both cars... You can see that we are now top speed 17 and top speed 18. Overall we are still at uh, 22 and 21 because uh, we are still working on the car. But I think that for now I'm gonna be waiting until we have those new side pods. So we also increase our engine cooling a bit. So for uh, Japan... I'm thinking that it's still the best uh, option to uh, be driving with the old chassis on the car. And then in China uh, we will uh, be uh, putting the new side pods and chassis on the car. So for Japan the uh, racing targets will still be P21 and P21 for round 4 of this season so we are not uh, gonna put the new parts on the car yet uh, that will be for the next race so we have uh, practice session qualification and the race uh, both the qualification and race will be in rain so we will see what uh, will happening there but yep yeah, Again, we will show you the results when we have them. So, qualification in Suzuka, Japan for the team is Robrecht Schwarzman P21 and Felipe Drogovic on P20. So, yep, let's head on to the race. So, we got our results of the Japanese Grand Prix and again, not a good result for level up racing. Uh, they dropped back to P21 and P22 and also in the practice sessions we had to put two new underfloors uh, on the cars. Felipe and Robrecht both uh, damaged their underfloor in practice sessions. So uh, we will need to develop two new underfloors. So, boys and girls, our next race will be China, but for that I will be making a new video later on. So, I hope that you enjoyed our first start of the season. Uh, yeah, so far uh, it was not a good uh, start of the season. Uh, let me check where we can find that one again. I'm looking how I can find that one again. I don't really uh, 
There is somewhere that you can see that. Is it? Oh yeah, here it is. So we had four uh, Grand Prix driven. So in Bahrain, we were up 21 and 22. In Jeddah, we were up 19 and Robrecht got a DNF. In Melbourne, we were 21 and 22. And then in Suzuka, we were 21 and 22. So our best result so far is that uh, P19 of uh, Felipe Drogovic in uh, Jeddah. And so next up will be the Chinese Grand Prix, but yep, yeah, that will be for a new video. So boys and girls, I want to say thank you for watching our first uh, part of our career mode as a manager of F1. And uh, I hope to see you soon again for uh, the uh, upcoming videos. So, yep, thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to. You don't need to do that. You know I'm making this video things for fun. So, yep, uh, I see you next time again.